So, why have I not been able to make this video for a few weeks? And why do I have facial hair? I will just explain that right now before even getting to my scripted intro. And then the final few files. So, I'm almost finished with a six-week program at a workforce center. If you know me personally, I think you might know where that place is. If not, don't worry about it. So, on the the first week, I did bring a razor. That was one of the things I packed. And my parents came with me. And then after I got settled in, they took my car. So I drove, but then they took my car so that they did not have to stay on campus. So my car is not on campus. I did shave the first Saturday. Usually, or at least what I like to when I shave, it's on Saturday. Um, so, so I shaved the first Saturday, but I stayed on campus for the weekend, you know, and then the second Saturday, my father and brother came, there was, there, and, 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 and they picked me up, took me home, there for the weekend, and then I came back on Sunday, and I drove my car, so I, so... Yeah, from the Sunday night just after the second Saturday onward, I have my car on campus. But there was miscommunication on that Saturday that resulted in me taking my razor home, and I did not have my razor for a few weeks. I didn't go home until, again, until today, the fifth Saturday. We had the graduation ceremony yesterday, but we're not officially finished until next week. And I'm not going to explain that. I'm not going to get into any detail about that. So that's why I haven't been able to shave for a while. You do the math. Or I did. I did shave before I went home on that second Saturday, but I did not have my razor all the next week to like third Saturday, and I didn't have it the week until the fourth Saturday and I still didn't have it. And now we're in that fifth Saturday and I have my razor and I can shave. Uh, I'll just do that later. Um, another thing. I have made some friends, I guess. In case any of you are watching, it's uh, unlikely because I haven't told anybody about my YouTube channel there. Though I could if I see them on the sixth week. But anyway. Shout out to everybody else in my group. But to protect anonymity, I have parodied all of the names. If if you're in my group or you know the people in anybody in my group, like especially if you're affiliated with this center I went to, you would know. But if you don't know these people, then don't worry about it. These are not their real names. These are parodies to protect anonymity. It was nice knowing you, Tyler Braylon, Calvin Black, Ella Carson, Caden Collier, Octavia Cornell, Gwendolyn DeLargo, Kenny Deluge, 
Matt Grand, Saul Green, Odie Hans Ben, Randy Mountain, Shane Keller, Michelle Carpenter, Karen Landis, Jay Laurier, Ike Logan, Pat Manning, Israel McElroy, Jalen Milo, Bailey Ramsey, Jill Riveras, Raymond Sweeney, Brent Singers, Arthur Golden Screw, Bailey Pushpins, Mary Sue Toby, Brittany Warren, and Justin Walters. Right, back to this. I'm not British. I don't know why I said right like they do. I'm, I need to find out where we are here. Which one of these I need to look at first. I looked at it earlier, but I forget. So. Right, it's this one. I belong to lie anti anti E4. I honestly did not look at the beam at all after I as I as I I belong to lie anti anti four. Hello my friends, it's been a while. Welcome to had it though? Had it been a while? Yeah. Morgana rides. Colossus. about this piece I could describe that I like. Like the rhythm, the, the percussion section. The, the, like with that drum roll and also the... Like, Fun fact. My phone notification comes from... Right around here. Right around here. My phone notification. And I also like the like the melodies and the chords. And... I have the power. Later in the video, I'll describe something here from uh, this part. I'll explain something about it later. And that's why it kind of gave me chills for a while. Well, kind of for a while after I bought the Y. Progressive. I bought the Y anti anti E5. I'm going to wrap up this part of this episode of the I Belove the Life series. The I Belove the Life series. And click. Little did I know I would reboot the I Belove the Life series for season two. And of course, at the end of season two, I already knew I would do season three. But when you break. So. Season 2 is last year, season 3 might be next year. Heap. Heap. Q. Stack. Uh, what's this one? What's this one? 
I have Beloftalite, Anti-Anti, 5. This is it! Oh, wait. I haven't shaved. I actually shaved again. Yeah, I, I should too. I should shave. I'll take care of it later. What is wrong? Shaving mirror. Mark, this is it. This is Cloak. This is it. This Night Chaser. Liturgy of the Street. Dire Space Emergency. Depth of Focus. Digital Jalenhar Lemonade. Oh, there is a typo. The H. Should be before the N, I think. No, I know what the typo is. The D is a missing. And the H is a fine where it is, but there just needs to be a D between the N and the H. So this is supposed to show that something in the percussion of Digital Lemonade and Jalandar I think are the same. It's like the finger snap. While I'm here, let's look at the confused memes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of those. We have confused baby, confused girl, confused man. Confused math, confused weight, and what? Episode 6, Anti-Anti, Part 1. Uh, I forget what all I said. Did I say Part 1 yet? Doesn't matter. So six anti anti part one. What happened to the trolled jingle? Hey, here's a question for Dave. What happened to that trolled jingle? I'm not the only one to ask that. Somewhere along the course of the trolled series, somebody wrote a catchy reggae styled jingle for it. The jingle has appeared in several episodes, but suddenly, it stopped appearing in episodes. I will find a trolled episode with the jingle in it, so you all can hear it. Also, Dave's not the only one. His editor, Chris, or anybody, if anybody has any information about what happened to the trolled jingle, you can let me know in the comments. A big shout out to Thomas Albin for the trolled jingle. This is one of I don't know how many episodes with it. Not touch the red button and find out what shenanigans are going on. It's a troll level. It's a troll. Before starting up this level, let me just say the level code is right beside me. I don't know why it was stopped being put in. Maybe Thomas is watching and he could tell me. However, I think it is unlikely that he is watching. Calendar. 
Oh, would you look at that? Saturday, May 30th. And this May 30th. He usually does not do the live version of Trolled on Saturday. Usually it's another day of the week. That also explains why the video's so long, I think. Went to the restroom and missed what happened. I have to confirm that the anti-anti video was indeed uploaded on Saturday because those were the ones I used on I Bought Off to Lie. Dishwasher noises. Back then, before anti-anti, Saturday trolled episodes did not come from Twitch live streams. Those that did, I think, were usually uploaded on Wednesday. Since then, all of the trolled episodes start as Twitch live streams, usually if not always on Saturday. Nowadays, in addition to the weekly Saturday trolled videos, a Wednesday trolled video is uploaded maybe either every week or every other week. But I'm not sure of that upload schedule. Catch you guys later. Bear 24. This is. Catch you guys later. I'm. My father spoke kind of quietly, but he said he needed the computer to try to find the website. Yes, that is vague. I probably knew back then what he was talking about. I don't remember it now, but if I did, it would probably be none of your business and I still wouldn't tell you what it is. Third loud warning. For the same reason as the first two, we have a loud warning. Again. Laid back mimicry. I don't even know what's real anymore! Dave was so laid back in this clip. My mimicry here was easy to miss. Bird clock again. So, of the told live series, Today we're going to be looking at a level called the anti Alain Burkhock again. Uh, right there, that is the bird clock. I paused the video and pointed out where the bird clock was. Part of it was in the shot and part of it was out of frame. Bear 24 Factorial. Or did Bear 24 collab with Bear 24 Factorial? It's gonna be right above me. In math, the bang symbol is used for factorial. One part of I Belong to Life Season 3 Episode 0 explains what factorial is. And I also explain in that video why I call it episode zero. 24 factorial is greater than 6.204 times 10 to the 23rd. That is a little more than 1.03 times Avogadro's number, which is the scale between atomic weight and grams. In other words, Whatever the atomic weight is of something, using atomic mass units, which are tiny because atoms are tiny, if you have Avogadro's number times that amount, you can change the unit to grams. My explanation is correct, but I kind of almost confused myself trying to understand it from the perspective of a person who's 
not very good. Like, lay person doesn't know much about chemistry. I tried saying just how big Avogadro's number is, and trying to say that 24 factorial is even bigger than that. Key, not coin. I have to get the coin from the top. Okay. <laughs> how is this key? Look, the key is literally touching us. Do you guys see this? The key is literally touching our tush. And we're not collecting the key, yet when a mushroom on a track is one pixel away, like lined up with the wall, and like one pixel away from us, we can collect the mushroom, but the coin that moves and touches so us. So apparently one of the Goombas must have the keys. Twice, I accidentally called it a coin, but I correctly called it a key between those two times, just after Dave called it a key. I only corrected myself once. Dave did not want anybody to mention how he struggled to realize that you get the key from above. That is, without activating the hidden Kaizo block. Wait for the box. Do wait. Yeah, do wait. It says wait. The wait in the prediction matches what is spelled with coins. The prediction text changes as I change my prediction. I think it is clever that I have reused the B in both words of the other prediction. Not not both. Yeah, think about double negative because the 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 title he oh we want to only jump on one. This this one is subtle. Dave said you should jump on only one of the Koopas, not not both. I I had interpreted that as a double negative, but. But I kind of explained it to, to myself, deliberately. You, you know sometimes when, when a person talks, they, they kind of stutter or, or repeat words? That's, that's what, what was, was happening, happening there, there. Backlight. It's kind of dark. How about a backlight? I forgot to mention part two. Okay. This clever editing bit uses a cut to make it seem like my clap turned on the light. Left me part three. Just like we saw previously, on, on some previous episode. I referenced a clip from Left Me Part 3 to show what I meant by getting close to or through the end without actually getting the end. Editor Issues I don't even know if we're close to the end or not, <laughs> so I'm just not going to try to <laughs> I said I'm not going to try for that one, just get rid of... Okay. Oh, we got a checkpoint! Let's go! Check... When... Wait... The... Door? Seriously, editor, just get rid of that te Oh, now you listen. I had made a prediction about the end, but I wasn't sure how close, so I retracted the prediction. Editor me kept the text on the screen for too long, and I got a little annoyed. 
more editor issues. This pipe is correct. That's what I think it is. Let's see. Well, wait a sec. So the ending's got to be around here somewhere, right? I am. Um, excuse me. I think this pipe's correct. I didn't even look at that pipe. But I'm, say, say this pipe's correct. This isn't necessarily a chance. Okay. You know what? Sorry, I'm changing my answer. I think I saw this before the ends down there. Yes, I'll make up my mind. Down here is the end. For glory, but it is a hit. I had made a prediction about the pipe, but editor me didn't put the text on the screen until I mentioned it again. I changed my prediction, and editor me mocked me by asking me if I would make up my mind. Then, well, finally, editor me used the alternating caps thing to mock my foolish prediction. Almond joy. I don't like almonds. Well, why not take coconut, put an almond on it, cover it in chocolate. Oh, I like chocolate, but not the other two ingredients of almond joy. Out of the three main ingredients of Almond Joy, I only like chocolate. Almond is in the title, and in some versions of the logo, a coconut is in place of the O in Joy. I mentioned this because I had just eaten a coconut bean. What would happen if we removed the almond and replaced the coconut with peanut butter? I asked and thought about that question at the beginning of the outro. I don't know how I missed this. Maybe the screen recorder cut it off? I don't know, but... It's actually the dishwasher. The, sh the simplest trolls sometimes make the best trolls. Like that, that one was so funny. We made it. That's all that matters. That's our sink. I love that. I love that troll. <laughs> I am not going to mention all of the background noise in I Bluff to Lie, only those that are significant enough. This one is significant enough that I paused the video. I thought it was the sink, but it actually was the dishwasher, which is beside the sink. There it goes again. Mr. Mole. I like the mole and mole. It also interrupted the outro of Brand New Part 3 twice. This gap between the dishwasher noises was big enough, but there was no screaming cowboy. So I separated them. The one for the outro of Brand New Part 3 was small enough to keep them together. You see what I did there? Big enough. No screaming cowboy though. Not gonna die. I think not. We were not. talking about hitboxes earlier. Will I die here? I think not. I want the shiny. I think you're good, I think you're good, I think you're good, just keep going, keep going, I think you're good. Oh, this must be the head of that person. Yeah, you're good. Right. This is a reference to a song by Skillet. Because of what I have on my script, I'm about to go musically theoretical on you. It is in F minor. And I'm not sure why I particularly like F minor. 
especially the progression of F minor, then D flat over F, then A flat over E flat, then E flat. F's tritone is B, and I also like the mysterious beauty of B minor. Anyway, do not confuse spike traps, spike tops, spinies, spiny shells, spikes, spike balls, wigglers, pokies, snow pokies, skewers or spike pillars, and spike blocks. Important reminder for editor me, do not forget to actually put in that chord progression so that you can hear it. And do not forget to put in the pictures of the spike things. El Modo Español. Hola mis amigos, bienvenidos a Pacbarham y esta parte de este episodio de la serie de Iblastiae. ¿Por qué hablo español? Ah, este es el problema. Y aquí. Testing, testing. Okay, there we go. I fixed the Spanish problem. Should I try the intro again? Nah, let's just dive right in. So El chiste aquí es que yo hablaba español y traté de averiguar por qué. Yo descubrí, descubrí que mi página de YouTube estaba en español. ¿Qué hice para esta chiste? Tan pronto como lo cambié a inglés, I tested my speech and found out that it worked. I was speaking English again. The joke here is that I was speaking Spanish and tried to figure out why. I discovered that my YouTube page was in Spanish, which I did for this joke. As soon as I changed it to English, yo probleme mi discurso de descubrí que funcionaba. Yo hablé inglés otra vez. I wonder who this guy is. Testing, testing, okay. The To this day, I still haven't found out who that guy is. Ha! The entire I Beloved to Lie series is about his trolled series and being boozled. Obviously, that is Dave from DGR. Okay, Count. Okay, there we go. I fixed the Spanish problem. While making the script then voiceovers, which I will explain later, I noticed that I said OK many times. None of Dave's audio. Nope. The screen recording file contains my microphone audio and the computer audio together. My microphone audio was very glitchy and noisy, so I just muted it all, including the computer audio and therefore the trolled audio. I could have recorded the trolled audio without my microphone, then cut and positioned it so that it lined up with the recorded video, but I decided to not do that. So there may be some things that you hear me say in the voiceover that won't make sense without the trolled audio. Go west. Say left. Go left. Get the star and go left. This is a reference to a song by Pet Shop Boys. 
Its chord progression is similar to that of Pachelbel's Canon. The Canon is in D major, but Go West is in E minor. Yeah, E minor, all right, yeah! Actually, it is in A minor. The F is natural for A, not sharp for E. Now that I think about it, it might be in C major with many minor chords in the progression. HTML, which is hypertext markup language, is used to build websites. Angle brackets, which are less than and greater than signs, make tags, which indicate elements, which are specific things in a website web page. Most elements can have things inside them, which requires a closing tag, which has a slash in it to distinguish it from an opening tag. In this example, the strike element is used, which puts a horizontal line through things inside it, which in this case is only the west text. Mouth wheel sound. Is it funny how I mimicked the sound of the wheel with my mouth? <laughs> Backlight, again. Backlight. This time, instead of clapping, I just pointed to it to turn it on. My voiceover did not line up exactly, but that is okay. Cows eat grass. Cows eat grass, right? Should I eat the bean like a cow? And not like the way in how animals eat their food. Moo. Oh, no, that's not moo. That's boo. There are a few funny moments here. I just suddenly mention that cows eat grass and ask if I should eat it that way. There's that Colossus notification that I described earlier. Mr. Epic Man made a loud moo and planted his face on his plate to represent how a cow eats their food. WHO LET THE COW IN THE HOUSE?! I'll take care of that later. And I'll also take care of my squirrel later. This is not what I meant by a few funny moments here. Because I didn't know about all of this while I made that. A few funny moments here that Moo and planted his face on his plate to represent how a cow eats their food. Part two of how animals eat their food includes a collaboration with several YouTubers. I eat the bean more like a cow, chewing the bean slowly with my mouth, moving in a circular motion. I made a moo sound, and I did a and I did a good job lining up the voiceover there with the video. There was a boo on the screen, which is one letter different from moo. Oops, not green. I forgot to change that prediction text from yellow to green. But let the records show that prediction was correct. Weird mushroom hitboxes. Do you remember the other mushroom on a track that Dave got? I mean, that thing Dave wasn't supposed to get. But here, it's like the same thing. But, but, um, but this time, the mushroom's below. Mario Maker hitboxes are weird. I referenced a clip from Anti-Anti Part 1 to show what I meant by Dave getting the mushroom. 
I used the chroma key feature to make the background transparent. Seriously though, how could Dave get that first mushroom, but not the mega mushroom, despite being in very similar situations? Mario Maker hitboxes are weird. Grass flavored jelly bean is weird. Doi! Doi! You didn't hear Dave make a similar sound in the I Bought Off the Light video, but this is another instance of me mimicking a sound that Dave made. Pick a nye. Nye. I found it in the troll video. I found it in the troll video, and Dave actually made this sound twice while figuring out how to point. Okay. Glitchy audio. Um, hear what the audio sound sounded like. Instead of making you guys hear that for 15 minutes, I'm going to go through hearing that for myself for 15 plus minutes, and I will type it in here in the document. And this is why I muted the audio instead of making you all hear that for 15 minutes. I did while... Er, I did while trying to figure out what I said so that I could write a script and record voiceovers. I did a pretty good job, but there was one moment where I really could not remember or make out what I had said. So I guessed. I will point it out in the I Beloved a Lie after Black video. At 16.07, I revealed that I ended up making 11 voiceover recordings that were used in the video. Tell you what, before I get to part 4, I want to, uh, my mother and I want to go on a walk, so I'll do that. And, and I might as well just shave, so when I go to part 4, my squirrel will be gone. That is an iCarly reference, calling a mustache a squirrel. Don't be an... Oh, idiot! Look like an idiot farm girl. Alright, I've shaved. I got pr pretty much all of it. Yeah. My face feels better now. Oh, I need to get to part four. Part four! There's Dave! If it's possible for me to do, there's Dave to my left or or relative to the screen to the right. Okay, that's good. Last time we left the Yes, I did it. I put myself beside Dave. We have proven that it is possible. That right there is a reference to an old series by DGR called Is It Possible? where Dave attempts a difficult challenge or maneuver or something in a video game. Because video games is what Dave does. And if he succeeds, he proves that it is possible. Different from other I Beloved Alive videos, this one has the trolled video in theater mode. Fourth loud warning. Stadia. This time, the loud warning was for the Stadia ad. By the way, 
This is the first I Belove to Lie video with background music while I'm making predictions and such. Disregarding the Super Mario... I had a little typo. I had make instead of maker. I just forgot the R, but I've added it. Uh... By the way, this is the first I Belove to Lie video with background music while I'm making predictions and such, disregarding the Super Mario Maker 2 music and ads with music. We did have background music during the Bean Bean Boozled S Kids fail, and before that, during the Gone Fishing bit. Some of the After Black things have music. Come on down! Come on down. You're the next testing on the prices right now. I didn't fully say it, but this is a reference to The Price is Right. Drew Carey is the host and George Gray is the announcer. When a new contestant is called, George says, Come on down. You're the next contestant. Has George ever messed up like that? When a new contestant is called, George says, Come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. And the contestant joyfully makes their way from the audience to contestants row. I predicted that Mario should ignore the star and come on down the shaft beside the red Don't go up. Yeah, don't go up. Don't get the star. Don't go up here. That's what I'm predicting. This is another instance of the prediction text changing as I changed my prediction. The entire time, the text is only comprised of two-letter words. I shouldn't have changed the prediction. I should not have changed the prediction. Wheel of Mythicality. You know what time it is. It's time to spin the Wheel of Mythicality. No. This is a reference to Good Mythical Morning, a popular YouTube series with more than 2,000 episodes and counting. At the end of each episode, the Wheel of Mythicality is spun to determine how the episode ends. Or how or what they should do at the beginning of the after show, Good Mythical More. I dropped a pink bean. Okay. I dropped the bean on the floor. I didn't mean to do that. Bean mean. I mentioned the black bean in New Style Part 2, so I might as well mention this one. It is confirmed that this bean fell on the floor, and it is confirmed that I ate it anyway. Usually in this series, bean is a pun of Ben, but this time, it is a pun of mean. Music change. Now we're safe here. The troll adventure continues as the background music changes changes from more I'm just going to start over. The troll adventure continues as the background music changes from Morgana Rides to Colossus, both by Kevin McLeod. I think I've figured out my problem. Maybe I focus too much on speaking clearly. I put too much effort in it, and sometimes it's ironic and makes me stumble in the words. Or maybe I th think I mess up, which causes me to mess up more, even though it was fine the way I pronounced it. I'm not sure. Not gonna die to... This is... 
not gonna die too. Unless the powers of now, yeah, you will not die to the bottom. I hear. This is another reference to the song by Skillet. The last line of the chorus is, "No, we're not gonna die tonight." Camel case. You are a jerk. You put the same exact troll. <laughs> Let's talk about identifiers in programming languages. An identifier is the name of a variable, field, property, method, function, or something like that. It is a sequence of characters that identifies something that is defined. So basically, whatever name for a particular section in memory. And every time you use that name, it recalls that specific section of memory. You don't have to know where in memory it is, you just type the name, and you just know that every time you use that same name, you use the same section in memory. That's basically what the identifier is. And it's possible each time you run the program, it could be a different place in memory, but for each run, be the same. You know. A variable is just like a something that holds a value somewhere in memory. When you reference the variable, you get the value there. So a variable is used to store it. I wrote the script for a reason. I need to read it. Um, many languages have the following rules for identifiers. They can only be made out of lowercase letters uppercase letters, dollar signs, underscores, and digits 0 to 9, but a digit 0 to 9 cannot be first. Because if a digit is first, then it will be treated as a number literal. A digit first tells the, the compiler or interpreter that it's a number. So you can't start with a number. If you do not start with a number, then it knows to look up the variable with that name. Starts with a number that treats it. It starts with a digit zero to nine, treats it as a number, not a name of something. There are certain conventions which are generally accepted practices for formatting identifiers. Classes and global functions have Pascal case where each word starts with a capital letter and the rest of the letters are lowercase. Constants and final fields have uppercase with underscores to show the importance that this value does not change and the underscores separate words. Other things have camel case, which is similar to Pascal case, but the first letter is lowercase. The capital letters resemble humps on a camel. Private fields and internal properties can have camel case starting with an underscore. Mind reader. Or is this an exact replica of the previous one? Oh, that is... Okay, Dave tried going up. Do you remember when some of my prediction texts change as my predictions change? This time, I change the prediction in my mind. Mixed things up some. I'll eat two beans. One, because I thought Dave was going to actually try here, but he didn't. And two, because I thought you would not die here. Or, I mean, that... What did I think? Oh. Okay, one, I thought Dave would try here, but he didn't, so that's one bean. And then two, I thought you would, I thought it would be different, and you would die here, but you don't die here, so I'll eat two beans. I'll go ahead and spin the wheel twice. Additionally, because I had two predictions going, I didn't recall the other one correctly. I called myself Chief, and I deliberately mixed words up some at the end. Shrek the second. 
The best troll is they're like onion. It's multiple layers. One layer you go through and oh I need the mushroom. Okay, so you get the mushroom, okay. But then there's another layer. It ain't this mushroom, the bigger mushroom. The best trolls are like onions and ogres, because all three of them have layers. This particular area of the course has multiple layers, and may have helped to establish a certain eyeball off the line nostalgic feeling, which I will explain next after next. Progressive. Did I have anything to do with progressive power up? Can you combine a, like, regular mushroom and the super big mushroom, whatever they're called, as a progressive power up? But I don't understand it. Progressive is an insurance company, and Flo is the spokeswoman shown in the image. A progressive power-up is one of two when first shown, and which one it is depends on if Mario already has a power-up or not. In this case, upon coming out of the pipe, if Mario does not have a power-up, it is a super mushroom, which I think applies to all progressive power-ups. Or, if Mario already has a power-up, it is a mega mushroom. That applies independently to each one that comes out of the pipe. <laughs> I have the power. Big mushroom. Wait for the pee to run out, up here, gonna get the fire flower, and we're gonna wait here for the link power up, now we can smack it with our sword. Nobody else would recognize this as a shenanigan. But I somewhat do. It isn't a big shenanigan, but established a feeling that I kind of considered nostalgic after I finished I Bob Off the Lie. This is hard to explain, but I think I can do it. Back then, I was relatively new to Silverman Sound Studios. I don't think I had listened to all of I Have the Power before putting it in I Belong to Lie. Shane Ivers composed it as a tribute to He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. I don't know much about He-Man, but I do know that it is an 80s action cartoon, and I think... And I think Shane did a good job of capturing an 80s action cartoon feel, despite me not knowing much about the 80s. For some reason, with this particular part of I Have the Power, possibly with Dave going through this area of the course and saying the order of operations he has to do, for some reason, this particular part of I Have the Power Sounds like video game music, like it is part of the game that Dave is playing, but this music is not Nintendo music. And this sentence, changing the subject slightly, has exactly 10 commas, interestingly. Swamp Hitbox. And... This is a clever editing bit. The asterisks approximate the corners of where I think the to forgot the H in swamp. That's another typographical error. The asterisks approximate the corners of where I think the swamp hitbox is. Don't blink because the asterisks go away when Toadette moves forward. Technicality. <laughs> I'm just gonna wait until we climb to the right side. <laughs> I don't even know what's real anymore. 
that is... That... Too long didn't read, this prediction refers to climbing up the vine, not getting hit by the thwomp in any way whatsoever. About the last part of it, I can call Dave a chestnut because I roasted him over an open fire. Conversation about cheating. Was I cheating by holding a bean in my hand? No, I wasn't, despite the fact that it might look that way. The way I answered technically created a loophole. I responded again in a specific way that prevented any possible loophole. Shaving shenanigan. This is it. Oh, wait. I haven't shaved. I shouldn't shave again. Yeah, I got a haircut. That is better. Let's try it again. I, sh I should shave. Why don't you shave? Good question, mother, even though I mocked it. I believe I was inspired by a Nigahiga video, but I can't find it. It is not the armpit shaving Dear Ryan video. It is not the going bald I dare you video. I believe in one of his videos, Ryan did some kind of a bit or joke about shaving his facial hair and what I slightly less believe is that he may have sneezed his facial hair back later in the video. If anybody can find it and show it to me, that would be great, and I would put a link to it in the description. Look at this meta. This references Left Me Part 4 and Level Fears Part 1, which referenced Left Me Part 2. One more thing. Fittingly, the background music is Shaving Mirror by Kevin MacLeod. This is it. This is it. This is Cloak. This is it. <laughs> the laugh. Me saying this is it reminded me of a Mark reminded me of a Markiplier video where Mark started by saying this is it. It is not the video titled, This Is It, because Mark started by saying, This Is Cloak, which is his brand of merch, I think. It is the video titled, This Is Definitely It. Magenta Intro. Unless I somehow don't finish here. I forgot to say my intro, so I put it in magenta text around the I off the lie text. Screencast Omatic Face Cam Duplication Glitch. So, uh, is it doing that glitch again in the back corner? Okay, I fixed it. It seemed like it hadn't happened before this video during I off the lie. But maybe it had before I started I Off the Light. I'm not going to look for it for recording this pack collection subseries, but if I find it, I will put a link to it in the description of this video. V video? Video. And it's things like that, combined with the fact I'm not doing much editing. Why? These videos are so long. For what seems like should be sh relatively short. Relative to how long they are. 
Give Shane the spotlight. Decided I won't use any Kevin McLeod for the movie. Never mind, I already failed at that. I knew I would be using Shaving Mirror, which allowed me to make this joke. I decided to not use Kevin MacLeod music in the video, but then editor me reminded me that I failed by playing a part of Shaving Mirror, which previously played because I had shaved. Did I forget earlier to say part 5 when I started that part 5? That doesn't matter. That's not important. Play this. No, play that. Play I have the power. No, no, no. Set it up. No, I've used that one too much. Night Chaser. Do Night Chaser. Okay. I decided on the Shane Ivers music to play but I couldn't really decide on the music I had already played, so I went with a new one called Night Chaser. I forgot to mention that I wanted Xenon Century to play after that, but Editor Me took care of it. I only went with electronic music, except for the last one, but I'll get to it later. Sound up. My father got the sound up. I'm not sure if I even knew back then what was happening, but I can infer. Perhaps there was a problem with the soundbar connected to the TV, and my father just then succeeded in getting the sound up. I, I always pinch my nose when I sneeze. I probably shouldn't do that. Oh, that's that sneezy joke thing that I explained earlier. I'll take care of it later. Uh, where was I? Back then, I thought I mumbled, which I tend to do, especially if I'm not sure what I'm saying, which doesn't apply here now because I have a script typed in a Google Doc, which you can find a link to in the description. I put a beta translator on the screen to tell you what I said and what I meant, but I can clearly hear what I said, so maybe it really was English, not mumble-jumble. Boost. Yep, the sound was definitely up, alright. There was an advertisement on TV, and I found out later, maybe even after editing, that it was the Experian Boost Cow. Thundering. It was thundering earlier, but it's not thundering now. I don't know why that thing to show thunder. Okay, I'm getting this. I don't think that was a glitch or a problem. It doesn't look at the current sky. It takes data from a weather service, I think, which predicts what the weather is going to be. I guess they predicted a thunderstorm from time X to time Y, and the storm ended sometime before time Y. Xenon Century. Way. There can be no way. Just go on up. Just go on up. I read this first, and then tell you what I just discovered. That I don't think I put on here. Something about Xenon Century and that swamp setup seemed to make sense together. 
Let's try to figure it out. Xenon Century is an intense, electronic, cinematic, sci-fi piece of music. Think of a sci-fi lab that has specimens in containers. It seems like the thwomp is a specimen of such specimens. This gave me a similar feeling to that one part of I Have the Power. Is it neat how the text is going vertically upward, the same direction I predicted Mario should go, similar to what I have done before? Now, here is what I missed, even while typing the script, that only just like, you know, a few seconds ago, watching this. Look, when Todek gets to the top, and listen to the music. Just go on up. Look at that coincidence. I think it's a coincidence. I don't think I planned that while editing the video. And somehow, I didn't notice even while typing the script. Angry bird. When Dave got Toadette to the top, I paused the video and paused the p When Dave got Toadette to the top, I paused the s Why am I having trouble speaking? I paused the video and really thought my prediction was correct. As you can see, I was wrong. Dave really sounded like an angry bird, didn't he? That's why I put the text Angry Bird on the screen. Angry Birds is a video game where you have to launch birds out of a slingshot to defeat the green pigs that stole their eggs and made them angry. I think that's what happened in the game. About the egg stealing. The birds made squawking and tweeting sounds. One such squawking sound sounding similar to Dave's sound here. Different birds have different powers when tapping the screen while they are flying. I didn't catch what happened, so I rewound it, and editor me decided to put the text on the screen again. Chicken and gravy dog food. Is there meat and gravy, like chicken and gravy, flavored dog food that comes in cans? Maybe not like this. I had eaten a canned dog food bean. It started to taste like meat and gravy, which made it not so bad. Not so bad. Is there meat and gravy, like chicken and gravy? Flavored dog food that comes in cans. Of course there is. Why would there not? Why? Of course there is. Why would not there be a chicken and gravy dog food that comes in a can? I dropped a bright green bean. Previously I dropped a bean. This time I also dropped a bean. Previously in the previous episode I dropped a bean. I didn't mean to do that. Did it again. Also, about 10 minutes into this recording, and we have out of five, so like about five minutes remaining in the recording, and about four the detour video. Oh, didn't realize how close it was. What is up with me dropping beans? That's three times, but I only remembered one of the previous times, which ended up being from Anti-Anti Part 4. I also didn't bean to do, to do that this time either. Liturgy of the Street. Oh wait, is it right? Oh wait, no, I can just sit here. I can sit here.
twice, twice. I hadn't heard the ending of Liturgy of the Street before adding it to I Ball Off to Lie. I remember being surprised, maybe thinking, what is going on with the music? Did I mess with it? Then I found out that is how it ends. Already covered. Oh wait, I forgot to say that when Night Chaser finishes due to the non-century. But that's okay. Already covered. Insurance. They tr well, was that already covered or will it be covered? That was a funny coincidence. Depth of focus sounds similar to Dire Space Emergency. Well, I don't know if that was a coincidence or if Shane intentionally composed them similarly, but the melodies are different. The chords are almost identical, but depth of focus is acoustic and Dire Space Emergency is electronic. If you do have an emergency and you are a customer of an insurance company that covers your emergency, the insurance company will pay for at least some of the emergency expenses. Coincidentally, I said that I covered Xenon Century. No, I did not make my own arrangement. I meant that Editor Me, which came after my recording and before the YouTube upload, added Xenon Century, as I had forgotten to mention earlier that I wanted. And just like that, all jokes and shenanigans of, that I found other than after 5 Seconds of Black, which will happen in their own video, video of I Belove to Lie in 2020, explained. I'll take, I'll take care of my facial hair again later. Anyway. If you're smart, click the like button. If you're a genius, click the subscribe button. And you will see me next time. Eventually I will finish the mashup challenge and I'll and eventually I'll do season two explanations. But I haven't even started typing the explanations for season two yet. Oh, guess what? By the time you're watching this, you can access this Google Doc with all of the explanations on it. And you can even access it while I'm still typing season two explanations, which I have not started yet. Another thing you can look forward to is I bought my season three next year. Maybe. April or May or sometime in the summer. I'm not sure when I will start season three. I have to find out what other obligations that I will have. That's it. Perhaps there was a problem with the soundbar connected to the TV, and my father just then succeeded in getting the sound up. I always pinch my nose when I sneeze. <laughs>